Yeah, and I have to leave at uh, 25 to 27 after the hour to go in the building. Uh, so is there anyone that could take over if, when I leave if we're not done? Where's Elizabeth today? Her basement flooded. Oh. Yeah. It's a good reason not to be here. Yeah. So this is the May 8th, 2024 uh, DEI working group meeting. And um, welcome. Uh, the minutes are in the chat. If you haven't filled out your name, I can see some of you doing that right now. Um, the one agenda item I can see so far is uh, Adinka's badging update. So why don't we start there? Okay, thank you, Sean. Um, so there is an issue um, that was raised, was it two weeks ago or so by Elizabeth on the need to add some new metrics to um, the budget application. Right. And so for there has been- Or for, is this for project or eventing, event badging? For the event badging. Okay. So we have um, three new metrics for the in-person events, which is uh, event accessibility, event location um, inclusivity, and then public health and safety. Then for the um, virtual event, we have just the event accessibility. So um, the the issue is, um, you know, it has to be a process from the workflow from the HTML form down to the badging board, and then um, all the things that are involved in there. So I had to um, go through that workflow to be able to add the metrics in. So we've been able to do the backend logic on the badging board itself, and then also updated the um, Magdam file for the checklist, both for the in-person and then the virtual. What remains now is just to update the website. The, the particular page where the forms are being submitted. And the reason why I'm waiting on that is, you know, once we update on WordPress, it goes live, right? So I need to be sure that we are ready to go ahead with this before we do all that. Apart so from that, that, we are ready to go. Okay, so that, and Elizabeth is does the process in the website more. Is it still the case that we make the changes in GitHub and then there's just a, a button that we hit on the website that moves it moves the new metrics over to be part of badging or do you not know it in care so we the work is still on the website the chaos website and um right now what we still do is to after the applicant has already filled in the form on the website then they have to go ahead and copy it to the github so it has not um, yet, um, so the intention is that we have the user do everything they need to do on the badging website without having to go to get about, we are not yet there. So okay. we are still on the status quo. So this is the badging website. So there's updates to the badging website that need to be made. Sorry if I'm following along slowly. So, so I'm saying that um, that's the only thing that remains now okay. for us to add the new metrics on the um on the HTML form in the Chaos Badging website. So once that goes live, then the workflow is completed, and then people can begin to use the version four. Okay, that it sounds like, and I. Who's responsible for those remaining changes, Dinka? So I am actually waiting for a response from um, Elizabeth since we have been working together on this. So um, I actually created PRs for both the markdown files and then the backend logic. So for the markdown files, I requested a review from Elizabeth. Once she's done with that, then I get a response from her to go ahead and update the HTML form. Then I'll do that and then we have it completed and people can start using it. Okay, that makes sense. I'm, okay, so there's a, at least you know the process. Just because I don't doesn't mean it's a mystery. <laughs> it's okay. All right, perfect. Uh, that sounds great. That sounds like uh, outstanding progress. Uh, anything else that um, we should discuss regarding the badging update? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I, I was hoping to bring this to the group, but I'm not just so sure this would be um, the optimal place or the best place to put it here because we have few people here, right? So for the budget review, I discovered that um, I think most of our badgers don't have their um, notifications set up on the budget website to watch the, the budget repo so that um, anytime they are assigned that particular uh, a application, then they can um, get on it as fast as they can. So sometimes I find myself having to reach out to them on Slack or, um, you know, try to ping them on the repo. So what I am thinking is that we could um, probably uh, encourage the reviewers on the Slack channel to watch the repo and probably set up no notifications that concerns them. Um, what I mean is there is a there is a choice for you to just select um, notifications for what wh whatever no um, post that mentions your name. Or another thing that we are thinking, which could actually take a longer process, is having us to do the assignment of reviewers and every other thing on the Slack channel. And that means that we have to um, probably implement some bot functionalities to make that happen. So either of the two processes, but one is faster than the other. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So basically people get assigned a badging review on the website, which is or on the GitHub, which is effectively a PR review assignment, right? And they don't know about it. And GitHub notifications don't work great because I think most people on GitHub are like me where they get hundreds a day and it's hard mm. to distinguish between the ones that matter and the ones that don't. So mm. we can either have like a push notification, like through, uh, so it's like the things I could see is like a push notification uh, to Slack with a GitHub action. And that's like your bot alternative. Or you'll have to have a person kind of, what's happening right now is like a person is doing it, right, Adinkia? Mm, so what I do right now is to reach out to people if by, after one week, because we usually leave a grace of one week, you know, give reviewers time to be able to um, take time to review the work. But um, after like one week or two weeks, if I don't get the response from a badger, I then go ahead to, DM them on Slack channel to let them know that they have been assigned. So um, that's what I do. I'm just thinking, could there be a better way we do this without having to pink them or having to um, reach out to them via the Slack channel? And then without um, the application taking longer than it should. Yeah. Uh, I mean, technically, I, I we could automate the notification via Slack channel. Like if a person could get a message like a private message from a GitHub action, which is okay. very like that, that could tell them they've been assigned. I don't know if that's better than what you're doing right now. It sounds perhaps slightly more automated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. GitHub options, right? Yeah. Together with Slack channel. Okay. Yeah. And I think, um, I don't know who's working on the event badge notification, but I think, I know, I'm pretty sure Enoch has some familiarity with um that process of creating a github action and i do as well and then there's the bot team uh, mm -hmm. what do you think is the best path if that's something we can do okay okay what I'm asking, what, what do you think is the the best next step i think yeah so, so, so I'm thinking we could explore the GitHub action um, okay. integration with Slack and see how that works, you know, in alerting people that they have been assigned. And um, let's see the response rate, how it goes. I think that would be something like I would like to explore. Okay. And thank you, uh, Ria. <laughs> I saw I saw what you wrote on the chat. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, no, thank you. I appreciate you very much for doing that. And I, I think this is an interesting conversation because I was actually be 
before I saw this, before the meeting, I was trying to find the place where the report was. And I know I have the link somewhere because Sarah, who had applied for it, sent it to me. I couldn't find the right email that had the link. And then I was bopping around on chaos. And finally, I just logged in at GitHub and went to my watched items because I remembered I had clipped watch on this. And that's how I got I tracked back to it. And then I saw it. So this could be, you now it's really super fresh because you just did this like a couple hours ago. So there wouldn't have been anything to look at before this. But um, I don't know if there's a way to, I, I'm not, I don't live in GitHub as much as some people do. So it may just be that this is my own gap, but I actually went to proactively go look for it. And maybe I shouldn't have been notified at all because I was just watching the issue. I was not actually part of this application. I'm just kind of more behind the scenes prodding people to say, hey, you should apply for this. And this is a really great program and highlight that it's available. Um, I, I don't know what the right answer is there, but th that's just a little bit of where I was trying to engage with it. And maybe mm. those thoughts are relevant to the overall uh, conversation regarding so, pushing notifications or letting people know about where the uh, badging review is. Um, so uh, as far as I know, I think that the organizer the person who actually created the issue usually gets the the badge in their email. Mm -hmm. In their email, okay. Yes, yes. So as long as you're on that repo, you get a notification of all that is going on in that in that uh, with regards to your application. Okay. I'll have to connect with Sarah and then just ask her, you know, what her experience was now that I know that she has it. So I can okay. follow up on that and see if there's a, um, if there's any feedback I can give. Okay. Thank you. I look forward to that. Thank you very much. But thank you so much. It's very exciting. It's our first one. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Hopefully the first of many. Yeah, that's great. Um, are there other agenda items? So thank you. Thank you. Anything else we should talk about with regards to the badging program? I guess I have one other question with regard yeah. to the badging review. And since I was to the side of all of this, apologies, since I'm, I'm, I'm not caught up with Sarah yet. But I'm wondering if there's an opportunity for learning so we qualified for the silver badge, which I think is amazing, and that's great. But now if next year they do Chapel Con and they want to go for the gold badge, does is there some kind of guidance about what they should improve? Yes, we actually usually guide people on what they should improve, especially if there are probably some um, questions were left unanswered. Uh, most of the time it's because they don't have um, the facilities required in place. So what we usually do is to advise um, that those facilities or those requirements get met so that um, we can actually be able to move them forward up to the good um, level. So all of this is present in the website for is you it, to be able to get is it I, i'm looking at the github uh the, the actual issue is that included in there so this is what i'm looking at right now um okay would you like to share a screen yeah oh um, I, I just put the link in but yeah i can share my I screen see that. is this the where you want to be ria i can let you share otherwise no go ahead yeah this is you go ahead and share did I Look share a messy screen? Oh, hold on. I see what happened here. I have to bring it over to my, apparently the browser I'm using and my default browser are not the same thing. All right, where should I scroll? So it looks like I see these event demographics and these are the things that we filled out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a Q&A and then 
if you keep going down, then it says thank you. Uh, and then it looks like it was reviewed. And then mm -hmm. the next thing in there after, I, I, I'm just not sure where I'm supposed to look for the guidance or if that was, if that's through a different oh. channel. Oh, oh, okay. So it's going to be by a human, like a comment down there. I oh, didn't I do it. Oh, I the comments. Yes. So I didn't do that because I felt for a start, a silver badge is good, given that um, many of the um, questions were left unanswered. And that's because um, sometimes the, the organizer says that they don't have it available. If you could go... If you could scroll up, um, Sean, you would see that um, there were some some questions I'm, that um, so accessibility requests is that a missing thing that could be improved? Well, it's a virtual event, so okay. I don't know that that's applicable. No, it doesn't seem like I'm not sure. I'm not an expert on that. And so mm -hmm. I, I guess maybe if I were going to give feedback on it, it would be. Is that I can see where accessibility requests might be relevant for a virtual event if, say, maybe you need closed captioning of what's being said on the tape uh, or what's being said as the recording is progressing or if there's signing available in a little box as people are talking that there's a signer providing um that interpretation of what's being said. But in general, when I think of accessibility, I tend to think of things more like, are there wheelchair ramps? And maybe that's just a very narrow viewpoint. I, I don't know even know what the feedback I'm giving is helpful here. So no, I, think, I think I understand, like you're looking at the things that were missed and um, the, basically I think that's the boxes that aren't checked. So I have not been an active badger for a while. And so I like what I always would do, like, okay, I'd look at like event demographics and it looks like um, providing an opt-out opportunity and text input are things that they didn't get that they could get that would potentially move them up the ladder, Aditya, Aditya. Okay, so... Um... Looking at it now, probably I should have uh, um, reached out to ask um, Sarah to provide more information. So for instance, if you look at the event demographics, you will see that there is no detailed information as to mm -hmm. how the um, audience um, demographics are being collected. So um, that's why our reviewers couldn't check the box for opt out. Um, and then for the text input. So uh, I think what we can do is for me to go back to the um to the to the application and then try to look at it all over again and reach out to Sarah that if is there any um, other information that she can provide for you to be able to move up. Well that's I mean I'm not trying to ask for a move up. I yeah. just want to no, no. hear that. You I know, understand. I'm it. delighted. I'm absolutely yeah. delighted. This is the first time we've done this and we got a silver out of the gate. This is fantastic. So, I mean, like, I'm not trying to add to your workload at all. Okay. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm going to encourage others at my company to consider these badges. What can I tell them or how can I help them engage in the process mm. better? So, I mean, I think the mm. opportunity for active learning, if you will, here is it's it's not entirely clear from the review what boxes you would check to go from silver to gold. And so the path to, you know, leveling up or improving isn't as transparent as it could be. And that might be some things that could just be affected by the training of a badger or perhaps just providing a more clear message about um, what could be improved the next time. Um, Aditya, you you do more work with this. So I think I don't think you're suggesting that you need to review or change this year, but I think the process you were describing would help you to understand how to communicate to to Rhea in this case or anyone in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, what do I what are mm -hmm. the okay, I got silver, awesome. What do I what are the things that I could do to 
advance to gold the next time, right? Okay. So, or if, um, you know, and for other people applying for badges, let's say someone applied and didn't qualify for a badge, how do they know what they need to fix or what they should be focusing on maybe for the biggest impact? And the other thing that I think maybe would be helpful is for things like that accessibility feature, you know, where it asked what accessibility accommodations are there. I don't know if we have examples of that in there um, in terms of, you know, the, for, for a virtual event, things like, is there closed captioning for the event or is there a signer for the event? Would having examples help people be inspired as to things that they could do to, I don't want to look at it the lens of improving the score for the sake of improving the score. I want to look at right. it in the lens of what proactive things can we do to improve the inclusion of the event? Yeah, exactly. Like I, what I see when I just look at this one is maybe providing some guidance on how to answer these questions for a virtual event. Would yeah. Help. Um, can I, Rhea, could I make you the co-host so that I can go to my principal's meeting? Sure. No? Yeah, okay. I'm happy to help. There's nothing left on the agenda, however. We, I was just going to say, if there's nothing left on the agenda, <laughs> yeah. just close the meeting early. <laughs> yeah, it's up to you. It's up to you all if you have other things to talk about. <laughs> I'll okay. tell you what, I'm going to, I'm going to leave and I will leave it to you to decide what to do after that. Okay, that sounds good. Right. Thank you. Bye, Sean. Okay. Bye, John. Okay. So um, I think that's something that um, I need to improve on because normally I know that um, Elizabeth, who was the lead, um, the budget lead before I took on, would usually um, comment in uh, in the application that, um, would you like to consider this again and all? Um, so I, I just figure that probably because there are some applications that people don't actually have the requirements that we are asking for, probably, um, let's say, for instance, family friendliness, they don't have a provision for nursing rooms. So um, they just keep this question and then that could also affect the percentage that they will get. Mm. So in this regard, this is what I'll do. Yes, I understand that you're not trying to move up, but I, then I could go back to the application and then give feedback regards the application in the comment session. Is that fine? That's totally fine. And I really do want to be clear. I'm not asking you to change your score. Yes. Or, or I, no, 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 not change the score. I'm delighted. I'm absolutely delighted. So I'm just thinking about it from the perspective of others who might be trying to obtain badges or apply for the process what parts of it are clear what parts of it makes mm -hmm. sense especially for a virtual event because some of the things seem more aligned with a physical event but you know when i thought through it mm -hmm. as i was talking through it i thought of oh well you could have someone who knows how to sign doing the signing to go along with the spoken voices if someone is hearing impaired and wants to participate in the event virtually. But I literally thought of that as I was talking. And if someone is filling this out, they might discount an feature or an option or just not realize what they should be doing. And if the goal is mm -hmm. to make it a more inclusive event, giving people those guideposts might be helpful. Hmm. All right, I'll put that into consideration. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I you hope know, thank you. I, I'm really, I am 100% delighted. So it's easy. <laughs> thank you. Oh, I, I hope that feedback is noted in the, in the doc. Um, I don't know who has been taking notes in the, in the doc. Is it Hallison? Oh, 
Okay. Oh, it, oh, do we be taking notes in the doc? I think uh, Sean wrote some notes. I can add oh, okay. them here. Um, okay. um, can I say something? I'm listening to the discussion, so I came in late. But I'm looking at this as if, if we can bring this up again when we have a larger house because I know event demography, we've looked at it uh, after uh, chaos come. There were some suggestions that came up around that area. So um, Elizabeth was working on how we can actually structure that area. We can still bring up this discussion and larger house because some discussions have gone into it and I, I, I think uh, then um, we'll move forward from there. Peculiar, I apologize. I was writing down the notes for this and I don't think I quite followed the question. Could you try that again, please? Just seeing that uh, this particular uh, event demography and all that we after one of after a uh, chaos call from other communities. So uh, there was a discussion could be structured, restructured. So um, in Oh, we have a flat house and some thoughts that have gone into that and they to make on that. So that's what I was suggesting. Okay. Um is it just me or Peculiar was breaking? Yes, I, I think that I'm I'm really having a hard time following because I think I was getting about every okay. other word. Okay, so peculiar. Oh, I'm I, I, I'm, you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear yes. you, but you, your audio keeps dropping in and out, so it's it's very difficult. So, oh. Peculiar, Red. peculiar. I I think I I understand what you are saying. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to um relay back what oh she has dropped. Okay, so what she was trying to say is that can we take this discussion to a larger house, like talk about it again when we have a fuller house? Because oh. there has been an, an ongoing discussion around um, this issue of event demographics not being so clear enough and um, the questions you were actually asking, that there has been a lot of questions around it, the accessibility, how we can have clear guidance on how to meet those requirements. And that even happened at ChaosCon. So there's been an ongoing discussion, and then um, it would be nice to have this kind of discussion again when we have more people in the meeting. Oh, 100%. That makes total sense. Okay. <laughs> well, as Sean said, there wasn't a lot on the agenda. Otherwise, I'm happy to talk about any aspects of it you want to talk about or we can end the meeting early up to you guys or i should say I'm up good. to you all I'm, I'm still you know adjusting my <laughs> language to make sure i use the right words <laughs> i'm good i'm good all right well thank you all for joining and thank you I'm delighted to get the chat a little bit i will <laughs> reach out to sarah and ask if she has any input on the process or thoughts and if there's additional feedback i can provide that in the next meeting okay no problem thank you so much thank you you have a wonderful day you too bye bye, -bye.